Today let's talk about making a simple DIY crystal radio antenna. By the way, these can also be used for short waves. Important note, and I'm going to stress this many times, all outside antennas need lightning protection. Uh, this video is not about that. It's something you have to learn about and, and use. Uh, you need things like lightning arresters that will jump a strike to ground. What I do is when I'm done with my antenna, I take the wire and I toss it out the window so that none of the wire is in the house. The wire is laying on the ground. If lightning strikes the wire, it will carry it to ground. But again, it's something that you have to implement when you build an antenna. Okay, so first, let's look at a handful of diagrams before we go on and look at the real stuff. One of the antennas we'll consider today is a gutter antenna. When I was a kid, we used these. You just take uh, some brass washers, uh, stainless steel washers, anything that won't corrode, tie it to a relatively flexible wire and throw it in the gutter and hook the other end to your radio and it produces surprisingly good results. Now, there's a couple conditions. Your gutters have to be metal. They cannot be painted on the inside and they cannot be grounded. But if you have those conditions, uh, a gutter antenna works rather well. Gutter antennas are susceptible to lightning, so when you're done, you definitely have to take the antenna down. But again, easy to do, doesn't change the look of your house, doesn't take any serious work to install. Next, we have the end-fed long wire, and the components are going to be insulator, uh, wire, and then we'll talk about grounding. So let's start over here on the right side. We have some place to tie our antenna to, the dead end of our antenna to. We need an insulator to keep the wire from touching that thing. And then we run the wire along, uh, attach it to another surface with an insulator. And then we run the wire down, the feed line down to our radio. Also, we're going to need a ground. So it, ground is simply a wire that goes out and goes into a, a ground stake. I'll talk more about that in a bit. The feed line should be away from the house as much as possible. When I did my uh, other antenna, when I did one of my antennas, I had to go near the house. It definitely impacts the quality of the signal. So as much as you can, keep it away from the house or other structures. And you also want to make it high, up, high enough above the ground that you get a good signal, but you don't want it too high that you can't maintain it. The third antenna I'll talk about today is a T antenna. And as you can see, it looks like a T. The blue line looks like a T. Same components. We need an insulator. We need the antenna wire. And of course, as always, we need the ground. So what we do is we attach both ends of the horizontal wire to a house or other surfaces. And then we have another insulator, which helps hold the weight of this line that descends down to our radio. So the feed line is attached in the middle. Typically, you want to solder that. In fact, I would strongly recommend soldering this point right here. But uh, this antenna is very nice because if you mount it under the eaves, you can keep it away from rain, sun, and uh, wind uh, quite a bit. You can also mount one of these in the attic. When I was a kid, we mounted one in the attic. It removes a lot of issues with things like lightning, sun, rain, wind. You can use a relatively thin wire, and you can run it a fairly long distance. So, um, yeah, that works very well. Sources of materials, types of materials. A ground rod is any metal rod that does not corrode easily, usually two meters or more long. And you can buy these at electrical stores, hardware stores, and similar. Antenna wire. Copper is the best, easiest to work with, easy to find. Aluminum, stainless will work, but they're less preferred because they're harder to work with, they're more expensive, and they do have higher resistance, so you won't get as good a signal. To buy new wire, you can go to electrical stores, stores that rebuild electric motors, which is where I got mine. Hardware stores, ham radio stores, they all have new wire. For used wire, you can, you can unwind a transformer, a solenoid, or electric motors, and I've done that frequently. For insulators, you can use plastic, glass, ceramic, anything that does not carry electricity. They come in different configurations. There's a dog bone, egg, bobbins. To buy them new, you can go to electrical stores, ham radio stores, or farm stores. Farm stores sell electric fence insulators, so those are good. 
uh, for DIY type of insulators, I use plastic PVC plumbing pieces. Uh, acrylic strips will work in a very similar way. You can get a shower curtain ring that are solid plastic or plastic rope and string also works. Not quite as well, but it works. And then things like plastic clothes hoops will also work. When you're putting up your antennas, you can try different things. You can try like the temporary, the temporary antenna. You can try a long wire V, inverted V. These are more complex, but as you're becoming uh, more acquainted with crystal radio, you can try the more advanced antennas. You can try different orientations. So you can set up one antenna north-south, another east-west, another somewhere along the diagonals on those. You can try to use multiple antennas simultaneously. I found that works rather well. If you have two or three antennas, you can hook up one uh, or the other or both at the same time. Grounding, you can use your ground rod. You can use no ground rod. Sometimes I've found this works for some of the stations around here. It works best. Or you can use a second antenna as a ground. And I've also found that that can work very well. You can also try different things with your radios. You can put it on a metal table, wood table. You can uh, orient it differently. You can put your hands or body near it, take it away, move it near the coil, and so on. Okay, so let's talk, uh, go over some uh, dangers about setting up antennas. First of all, there's working at height, you know, working on a ladder, anything like that. Yeah. Um, there's danger of lightning. We discussed that earlier. So when the radio is not in use, disconnect it, move the end outside. Never use an antenna or a radio that's attached to an antenna during a storm or if a storm is coming. And again, you're going to need lightning protection from all outside antennas. Never run an antenna near or across an electric line. If the antenna breaks and drops onto an electric line, that's very serious. Um, do not run antennas where it's going to strike someone in the face or throat or something. Um, yeah, that's uh, also a danger. When you're driving ground rods, make sure there's nothing underneath the soil, uh, electrical, water, or gas lines that you might drive through. If you don't know, check with your electric utility company first. And with all this stuff, if you don't know, if you have questions, learn first or don't do it. Okay, enough talking. Let's go on and look at the real things. We'll start out with construction methods. What about the type of wire you're going to use on your crystal radio antenna? Well, that's, that's also important. The easiest to find is copper wire. It's, it's the easiest to work with. It's the cheapest. Uh, you can find it just about anywhere. Steel wire and stainless steel wire aluminum wire. They don't carry electricity as well and they're hard to solder if you choose to do that. So typically I just use a, a copper wire. You can like unspool a transformer. Uh, this wire was unspooled from a fluorescent light ballast. These are some uh, bell wire that I had left over from another project. So any of these make a really good, uh, really good antenna wire. And also uh, Thickness. A thicker wire is typically better, but if you use it down low, there's always the danger that somebody will walk into it and cause themselves injury. So if I'm going to string an antenna down low, I usually use something that's going to break if somebody walks into it, like this one. And yeah, otherwise I'll use a thicker wire up high where, you know, if a bird lands on it, it won't break or something. But for wire, that's about it. Any uh, good quality copper wire should do you. On each end of your antenna wire, you're going to need an insulator to keep the antenna from touching anything that might carry the signal away. So on whether you're mounting it between two poles or your house and a pole or a tree or whatever, on each end of that antenna wire, you're going to need an insulator. And this is a very easy way to make one. It's just a piece of half inch PVC with holes drilled in it. On one side, where you're going to attach it, say, to a pole or a tree, you just run a wire or string through here and attach it to wherever it's going. On the other end will be your antenna and you'll pass this loop will go through here and here and then you'll tie it off like this and then the wire will run out uh, across your yard or wherever you're, you're uh, setting up your antenna. So this is a very cheap and easy way to make an insulator. Another option for insulators is something like this polypropylene string. It's, uh, it's 
very coarse and it won't collect water. Water won't stay in it very easily. You don't want to use something that's really like a fine fiber that will hold water for a long time. But this works as a fair insulator and actually I'm going to use it to tie up some of my other insulators. So anyway, polypropylene string can also be used as uh, an insulator. On each end of your antenna you're going to need to attach it to the insulator and that insulator will then be hooked to your house or a pole or something like that. So here's our two simulated uh, end pieces for our antenna. This side will be the antenna. It will be go running out across the yard, and this side will go down to our and uh, our radio rather. Um, and as you can see, they're pretty much the same. I mean, one's bare copper, and the other is uh, insulated. And so this one comes in here, has two turns of wire, has two turns of wire here. The same here, two turns of wire, two turns of wire. So what's the difference? Okay, well let's take a look. This, because it has insulation on it, the signal will come in here like this. It will go through this coil of wire. And a coil of wire creates inductance and capacitance and all sorts of things. Then it will come around here and it will go through another two turns, which will change the inductance. So here I've got a choke and here I've got an inductor. And then it will pass through the radio. This is a problem. I'll show you why. Let's look at the one that's not insulated. This one, the signal comes in here the same, but it hits this and it immediately goes down to the radio. It doesn't pass through the choke and it doesn't pass through this coil. Um, so yeah, this is the better way to do it. If you can solder it, now this one I soldered, if you can solder it right here that's a better thing. But if not, using the bare wire will help assure that your signal doesn't go through this choke and this coil and possibly upsetting your signal. So when you're attaching it to your insulator, this is something to consider. I would personally uh, prefer to use insulated wire, or sorry, non-insulated wire. And if it is insulated, remove the insulation. Uh, whether it's this plastic insulation, you can peel off. Or if it's enamel type insulation, you can scrape it off, at least at this point, so that the signal will go from the antenna directly down this wire and not pass through this. Okay? So that's one end of the wire. The other end of the wire is simply a loop. Same type of thing applies. Uh, you don't really want, uh, you know, a choke here. Uh, again, I've soldered this just because it's stronger. It won't slip that way. I, what I did is I looped this around the insulator and I tied a knot in it, just a simple knot, and I took the tail end of the knot and I just wrapped it around here. Now this is a really stiff piece of wire, so it's harder to work with and it's not as beautiful right here. With a thinner piece of wire, you know, this will be uh, a lot uh, lower profile. But uh, yeah, just something like that to secure the other end, uh, again eliminating any unnecessary looping or such uh, in the wire. So I will show you this. This is the brass washer set in the gutter. That's just a standard gutter. Make sure it's in there touching the, the bottom. And then we'll go listen. Probably going to have a lot of wind noise, but let's give this a shot. Um, so the wire comes over here, goes up here, up to my insulator as we discussed. I did solder this joint right here to make sure that I had a smooth flow from here down. Uh, polypropylene line. And then along here, let me let the camera adjust. Up here where I cheated because it's too close to both the members, so I used another insulating string to hold it in between there. And then it goes all the way out there. That's as long as I can make it. Out to this insulator. And again, it's soldered here. Uh, the insulator, insulating line, and then also this is a good insulator, and it's tight for security fence.
This is going to be hard to see. This is where I'm at on my T antenna. I've got one insulator here and it hangs underneath out there. Let's, let's take a closer look at this. This is the center connector. You can see I've got the polypropylene cord through the top and then I got the wire strung from one side to the other and then teed off of that is the wire going down to the radio downstairs. So that's the center insulator. Then the other side is over here. Tight on here using the polypropylene string. And there's the insulator. There it is. You can see up there in the middle. And it runs down. Right here I made a joint to go from the enameled wire up here to a yellow wire because Unfortunately, I have to run close to the house and down through a hole. Uh, I'm going to lose a lot of signal doing this, but that's life. I can't uh, run any other way. So sometimes there's compromises. Let's keep going down and look at that. My antenna wire comes from the roof up here. Comes down the wall. That's where it's too close to the house. And enters the house here. Also, I've got a ground wire that's attached to this steel that is hooked to the house frame, so that's a good ground. Okay, so let's go inside and do a test. I'm using this modified Boy Scout crystal radio, and one thing I found is it doesn't have the discrimination of my, of my capacitive tuning crystal radio. Um, and one of the problems is this antenna works so well, I pull in so many stations, it's hard to separate them. But anyway, let's give a listen and see how it sounds. This is the T antenna. Well, that's it for this video on antennas. I hope you find it useful and interesting in your crystal radio experimentation.